One minute ago, researchers analyzing deep sea bathymetry data from the Philippines' magnitude 7.4 earthquake made a discovery that's rewriting everything we thought we knew about how tectonic plates behave. The October 10th earthquake didn't just rupture along existing fault lines, it carved a brand new crack through solid oceanic crust. Captain Maria Rodriguez was operating a deep sea research vessel 400 kilometers offshore when her sonar detected something impossible. A fresh seafloor canyon stretching 200 kilometers in a perfect straight line. The Pacific plate has been split like breaking a dinner plate, Rodriguez reported to her geology team. We're looking at a fracture that goes all the way down to the mantle. But here's what's keeping earthquake scientists awake at night. When you split a tectonic plate, you don't just create a crack, you fundamentally alter how stress moves across thousands of kilometers of crust. The energy that was locked in the Philippines fault system is now transferring along the fracture, like pressure flowing through a newly opened valve, heading directly toward the Manila Trench, the Philippine fault system, and every big one scenario scientists have been tracking for decades. When the Earth's crust starts breaking in ways that dive ha halii, urani bi chans, Fe geological science. What does that mean for the 100 million people living above the world's most dangerous fault network? And how do you prepare for earthquake disasters when the plates themselves are rewriting the rules? The Philippines sits at one of Earth's most complex and dangerous tectonic junctions. This archipelago nation isn't just on the ring of fire, it's at the very center of a tectonic battle zone where multiple plates converge, collide, and grind past each other in a geological war that's been raging for millions of years. To understand what made the October 10th earthquake so unusual, you first need to grasp the country's unique position. The Philippines is sandwiched between two opposite-facing subduction zones, where oceanic plates are forced beneath continental plates, creating deep oceanic trenches and volcanic activity. On the eastern side, the Philippine Sea Plate subducts westward along the Philippine Trench. On the western side, the Sunda Plate dives eastward along the Manila Trench. Between these massive convergent boundaries runs the 1,200 km Philippine Fault Zone, a massive strike-slip fault system that traverses the entire archipelago from north to south. What makes this system particularly volatile is that the Philippine Mobile Belt, the collection of microplates that form the archipelago, is being squeezed from both sides. The Philippine Sea Plate is moving northwestward at a blistering pace of 8 to 9 centimeters per year, among the fastest tectonic movements on Earth. When you combine this rapid plate movement with the complex network of faults slicing through the country, you create a geological pressure cooker stress accumulates along fault lines until it reaches a breaking point. Then, suddenly, the Earth ruptures. This tectonic complexity explains why the Philippines experiences over 100 earthquakes every single day, though most are too weak to be felt. But every few decades, that accumulated strain produces devastating seismic events that rewrite our understanding of tectonic behavior. And that's exactly what happened on October 10th. The magnitude 7.4 earthquake struck at 9.43 a.m. local time with its epicenter located 48 kilometers northeast of Manay, Davao Oriental in the southern Philippines. Initial reports from the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or PHYFIV OLCS, placed the quake at 23 kilometers deep originating from movement along the Philippine Trench. This wasn't just any subduction zone earthquake. What made this event truly extraordinary was what seismologists observed in real time, a fracture propagating through the Pacific Plate itself. Normal earthquakes occur along established fault lines, explains Dr. Teresito Bacolcol, director of PHYVOLCS. This event was fundamentally different the force was so intense that instead of just causing slip along the subduction interface, it literally split the downgoing oceanic plate, creating a new fracture that extended for hundreds of kilometers. 
Satellite data from underwater monitoring systems revealed the shocking extent of the damage. A massive crack had opened in the Pacific Plate, extending 200 kilometers northwest from the initial rupture point. More alarming was that this wasn't a static fracture. It was actively growing, propagating at 3.2 kilometers per hour as it released centuries of accumulated stress. The immediate human toll was devastating enough. At least six people were killed and dozens of buildings collapsed across Mindanao. Tsunami warnings were issued for coastal areas within 300 kilometers of the epicenter, with small tsunami waves between 30 centimeters and one meter recorded in parts of the Philippines and Indonesia. But as the hours passed, seismologists realized this wasn't just another major earthquake. Something far more consequential was happening beneath the surface. Oceanic plates are supposed to be the most rigid parts of Earth's lithosphere. They're cold, dense slabs of rock that typically bend and subduct rather than break apart. When they do fracture, it usually happens along established fault zones, not through the middle of supposedly intact plate sections. What made the October 10th event so unprecedented was how the Pacific Plate responded to the enormous stress. Instead of following the normal pattern of subduction, where one plate smoothly slides beneath another, the Pacific Plate literally cracked open like breaking glass. In basic plate tectonic theory, oceanic plates should not fracture lengthwise like this, explains Dr. Mario Aurelio, director of the University of the Philippines National Institute of Geological Sciences. They're supposed to be rigid blocks that move as unified slabs. What we're seeing violates fundamental principles of how we understand plate behavior. The fracture isn't just a surface feature. Deep sea bathymetric mapping shows it extends through the entire thickness of the oceanic crust. A prochotic side sea. Approximately six to eight kilometers of solid rock creates a conduit through which accumulated tectonic stress can now flow. This is where the true danger lies. The fracture has essentially created a new pathway for stress transfer across the Western Pacific, bypassing natural barriers that would normally contain and isolate seismic energy. Think of it like a dam breaking, explains Dr. Chen. All that stored energy that was contained in one section of the plate boundary system is now flowing outward finding paths of least resistance toward other fault systems that might not be ready to handle this additional stress. And those fault systems include some of the most dangerous earthquake generators on the planet. To understand why this stress transfer is so alarming, we need to examine how tectonic energy normally flows through Earth's crust. In conventional earthquake sequences, stress buildup and release tends to be localized. When a fault ruptures, it relieves pressure along that specific fault segment. Some stress may transfer to adjacent segments, potentially triggering smaller aftershocks, but the overall system typically returns to equilibrium within days or weeks. What's happening now is fundamentally different. The October 10th fracture has created what seismologists call a stress highway, a direct conduit connecting previously isolated fault systems across thousands of kilometers. We're seeing unusual seismic activity patterns that suggest stress is flowing like liquid through this new fracture, reports Dr. Renato Solidum, Secretary of the Philippine Department of Science and Technology. Monitoring stations are detecting systematic tremor patterns progressing outward from the fracture zone at rates that cannot be explained by normal aftershock sequences. These tremor patterns are following specific pathways, converging on three major fault systems that have long been identified as capable of generating catastrophic Big One scenarios. The Manila Trench, a 900 km subduction zone capable of producing magnitude 8.5 to 9.0 earthquakes and tsunamis up to 20 meters high that could reach Manila in just 20 minutes. The West Valley Fault, which runs directly beneath Metro Manila and has a 400 to 500 year recurrence interval, its last major. The last rupture was in 1658, 
meaning it is already in the window for another major event. The Negro's Trench, a 400 km fault, recently identified by PHIV OLCS as capable of generating magnitude 8.2 earthquakes that could devastate Western Visayas. What's particularly alarming is the rate at which stress is accumulating on these systems. GPS monitoring stations are detecting ground deformation that suggests strain is building up 5 to 10 times faster than normal background rates. This earthquake has completely changed our understanding of how tectonic stress transfers between systems, explains Dr. Bakol Kol. Stress that should have dissipated over centuries is being concentrated in months. The most immediate concern is Metro Manila, home to over 13 million people and the economic heart of the Philippines. The West Valley Fault runs directly through this densely populated urban area, and PHY Fiv OLCS has long warned that a major rupture could kill up to 34,000 people and injure more than 100,000. Stress transfer models now suggest as Sam, um, that the October 10th event has significantly increased the likelihood of the long-feared big one striking the capital region. Micro-seismicity along the West Valley Fault has increased 300% since the Davao Oriental earthquake, indicating the fault is becoming increasingly unstable. Even more concerning is activity along the Manila Trench. Deep tremors have been detected for the first time in decades, suggesting the megathrust fault is beginning to respond to the transferred stress. Should this subduction zone... If the fault were to fully rupture, it could generate not just a devastating earthquake, but also a tsunami that would strike Manila Bay with minimal warning time. We're detecting coordinated micro-seismicity along the entire 1,250km length of the Philippine fault system, reports Dr. Chen. This level of synchronized activity across such a large fault network is unprecedented in modern seismic monitoring. What makes the situation particularly dangerous is that many of these fault systems were already approaching the ends of their seismic cycles. The West Valley Fault last ruptured in 1658, putting it 367 years into a 400 to 500 year recurrence interval. The Manila Trench hasn't experienced a full length rupture in recorded history, suggesting enormous amounts of strain have already accumulated. The October 10th fracture event hasn't created new earthquakes from scratch, it's simply accelerated timelines that were already ticking toward inevitable ruptures. The implications extend far beyond the Philippines. The stress highway created by the plate fracture connects to fault systems across Southeast Asia, potentially affecting earthquake risk in Indonesia, Taiwan, Japan and beyond. We're monitoring stress transfer patterns that suggest increased activity along the Ryukyu Trench near Taiwan and Japan, as well as segments of Indonesia's Sunda Megathrust, reports Dr. Aurelio. This is truly a region-wide phenomenon. The potential human toll is staggering. More than 200 million people live within areas that could be directly affected by these fault systems. Many in coastal urban centers with high population density and vulnerable infrastructure Metro Manila alone has a population density of over 20,000 people per square kilometre in some areas, with many buildings constructed before modern seismic codes were implemented. A major earthquake during daytime hours could trap hundreds of thousands in collapsed structures. The tsunami risk is equally severe. Models suggest that a full Manila trench rupture could generate waves reaching 20 metres in height that would strike western Luzon within 20 minutes, far too little time for effective evacuation of coastal communities. FIVO LCS has responded by implementing enhanced monitoring protocols across all major fault systems. But the reality is that early, early warning systems can provide only minutes of advance notice. For earthquakes, the focus must now shift to preparedness and mitigation strategies. Three weeks after the initial event, the plate fracture continues to grow and redistribute stress. Seismologists are tracking its expansion daily, 
watching as it rewrites the fundamental rules of tectonic plate behavior. We're literally witnessing the birth of a new plate boundary, explains Dr. Solidum. This fracture may eventually develop into a fully established boundary that will change how the Philippine Sea Plate and Pacific Plate interact for millions of years to come. The scientific implications are profound. Earthquake prediction models that have been developed over decades are being rewritten in real time as researchers scramble to understand this new paradigm of stress transfer. The, the most urgent question remains, how quickly will this transferred stress trigger major ruptures along the receiving fault systems? Some models suggest the acceleration could compress centuries of natural stress accumulation into years or even months. Other oceanic plates around the world are, are now being examined for similar potential weaknesses. If the Pacific Plate, one of Earth's largest and most stable tectonic plates, can experience this kind of catastrophic fracturing, then similar events may be possible elsewhere. We've entered uncharted territory in terms of earthquake risk assessment, acknowledges Dr. Chen. The rules that governed how we understand seismic hazards have fundamentally changed. For the over 200 million people living in potentially affected areas, the message is clear. Preparedness cannot wait. Governments across the region are accelerating retrofit programs for critical infrastructure and implementing enhanced evacuation plans for coastal communities. The October 10th earthquake has transformed from a local disaster into a regional wake-up call. The Philippines has always lived with seismic risk, but never before has a single event so dramatically altered the timeline for potential catastrophes across an entire region. The tectonic plates beneath our feet are changing the rules of their ancient dance, and we're only beginning to understand the consequences. Subscribe to Earth Attacks for continuing coverage as this unprecedented geological event unfolds. With every tremor, we're learning more about how our planet's crust behaves when it breaks its own rules. The question isn't if these loaded fault systems will rupture, but when, and how prepared we'll be when they do.